Hey guys, I didn't get your names. I'm Ian, but you seem to know that. Um, Mufter and Screen Peg. Anyway, I guess I'll tell you yes off the bat. This is a Nicky Nick t shirt, which I got. He gave it to me at 777 down in Washington Square Park. And I didn't think about like I was going to be getting on YouTube today, but he's also on YouTube, Nick. He's fucking really cool. Um, He's worth checking out his page, Nicky Nick. I, uh, regardless, that's not what I'm was talking about. I, um, I've gotten to a point, also, where I I've been thinking like, I wish that I didn't know what I know. I wish that I hadn't done this stuff to my mind. I wish I hadn't gone this 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 deep in my mind because sometimes I feel like I have a hard time relating to crowds of people because like the crowd when it comes to a crowd the mob mentality rules so if there's a crowd of people that all want to laugh and have fun and I'm there thinking about how people are just kind of wait, wasting time laughing like at a bar and I want to I'll be I, usually like if I'm out I'm the guy who's like sitting or standing and listening and looking around and, and listening to the people talk and they're all laughing and joking, and I think it can be kind of a drain on people sometimes when they just want to have a good time and, and forget about it. And then if I drink alcohol, I start to... Ew, this is gross. If I drink alcohol, I start to be able to laugh more. It's, you know, I just kind of mix it up. I've definitely felt that, like your friend felt. Like I've grown up too fast. But then I'm, you know, I'm 28. It's time. It's time to do this. I want to explain what you guys what you guys were asking about. What I what I mean with like with kids. Dude, everybody moved out yesterday. This place is empty. There's like an echo in here. <laughs> I've noticed with kids, little kids, like one and two years old, people refer to them as like the house pet as like the dog. They'll say, oh, what a cute baby, and they'll be talking to the mom. Oh, she's so cute, and they'll look down at her. Oh, what is she, how old is she? Oh, and and like, okay, my friend that I work with has this niece, and her niece is about a year old, I think, maybe a, between one and two, I think. And I saw her out at my friend's birthday, the niece was there, her brother was there, and it's her, her brother's daughter. And she was there, her name is Aura. Interesting name. So Aura was there, sitting on the thing with her mom, and like flipping her body around, and like throwing it, just like wigging out. And like, oh! And they were, they were talking about how she, they were like, oh, Aura is, oh, she's just freaking out. She's just this, she's just that. And I said, I looked at Aura and I said, hey Max, I looked at Aura and I said, you're kind of a drama queen to the one and a half year old. And she looked at me and completely stopped flipping her arms around and just looked at me and was looking at me like, this, you're talking to me, you know. She's not acting out because she's a kid. She's acting out because people are talking about her like she's some animal. If you talk to the children, communicate to the children. Like after I did that then, there was like kind of change in the feel of the situation. There was like everybody was like kind of got quieter. And then her dad went, uh, what is that? She's a drama queen? I went, yeah, she's like flipping herself around. And everyone was like, yeah, yeah. And she stopped. But my point is, my point about all this is, if we stop treating children like whiny animals that you got to take care of and just like, oh, the kid, the kid, the kid, and start looking at them and talking to them like real people and telling them what you think about what they're doing, listening to them even if they're not speaking, look at them and listen to them, even if they're not speaking, even if they're not making a sound, listen to them you can communicate with them and let them know that they are intelligent and that they can do anything that they that they 
it is important for them to listen. Really, talk to them like you would talk to a wise old man or, or a, your best friend. But just really communicate, truly communicate with the children. It will expedite the learning process because a child that knows that they can learn is able to learn. If a child doesn't know that it can learn, then it doesn't. We only do what we know. So I think it's very important for us to start treating children with respect that we treat others. Self-respect. You know, Be honest with them. Communicate with them, truly. And it will create a revolution of the human race because as it stands, kids are like coming in coming into a state of enlightenment. People are becoming enlightened in the past in like their 50s. You think of someone that's enlightened, you think of an old man. I think that every human, we can live in an enlightened society where people understand both aspects of reality, both the, the, the animal and the conscious experience, the, 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 the devil and God, whatever you call it, the, the physical reality and the extra dimensional reality. There, are, there is a duality to life. It is undeniable. There is a duality in existence. It is undeniably part of what is happening. And that is why people are so confused all the time. Because that's why people are just like miserable, I, I believe, is because they don't, they don't quite get the duality. They don't quite see that there is two things happening. There is what we experience, the physical stuff, and then there is this sixth there is the sixth sense or other dimensional experience that this is, this is just a bunch of energy. This isn't a cup in, from another perspective. I mean, it is a cup from this perspective, and then it is just a bunch of energy from another perspective. People don't exist until they appear from one perspective. Of course, then people always are existing in another perspective. It can drive you crazy. I need to reflect on this for a minute. I'm talking fast because I'm afraid I want to get it under 10 minutes. Is that, that's so fucked up. I've got this, this desire to get everything under, under the wire. I should just relax and talk. Kids are much smarter than we give them credit for. I mean, even like newborns, they get it. They know what's going on. They don't understand the literal as much. Like they don't know how to start a car. Or they don't know that green means go and red means stop. We, they have to be told. And that, that process, I think, for, for parents and for people starts to wear them down because they're like, I don't want to explain everything to this person. But you kind of have to. That's the, what the human race does is we explain things with patience. But then if you let the child tell, talk to you, the child will tell you the truth and will point out things about you. Because they, they are consciousness. They are conscious essence put into a human body and they are beginning the, the journey of understanding the third dimension. Really, they're the same as we are, except they're, they're just new to the reality and their bodies are small and undeveloped but so you have to allow for that by creating an, uh, a situation where they are safe from physical trauma and they are allowed to think and understand without fear of violence if you can if you can create a situation where the child does not fear violence or aggression then the child will become enlightened and will teach you many things this is something we can do it's something I've been doing particularly with the two kids that live over here, Michael and Hennessy, and, and listening to them and then telling them, and, and man, I learned from them. I hope this explained it a little bit more. I'm not really ending it on like a button or a cap or anything. Because there's no end to this.